Hi everybody! How are you today? Happy Sunday! All right, my question of the day to you is, what do you think the most important commandment is? Like of everything that God tells us to do, what's the most important? I think you'll see why I ask you that in a minute. All right, everybody, it is time to change our green screen. Ready? <gasps> Ooh, another clue of what we might be learning about today. All right, everyone, let's say a prayer. Father God, thank you that you love us so much. Thank you that even though we sinned against you, you sent Jesus to die on the cross for our sins and rise again so that we can be in your family forever. And so as we learn this lesson today, help us to understand how wonderful it is that you love us. And thank you that that love is a love that will never go away. In your holy name we pray, amen. Great job, everyone. Okay, it is time to review our scripture memory verse. Do you remember it? It's from 1 John 4, 7. First, let's read it all together. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. All right, let's add our sign language. Ready? Beloved. We close our fingers into kind of a fist right by our chin. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. So in this scripture, we're being reminded that God wants us to love each other. And that true love Truly loving someone only comes from God. And so for our whole lives, we want to learn more and more what it means to love one another. So let's practice this verse one more time. Ready? One, two, three. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. 1 John 4, 7. Amazing. And guess what? Today our lesson is from 1 John. So everybody grab your Bibles. All right, everyone. So last week you might remember that we spoke about how in the New Testament there are four books with the word John in it. There's regular John, which is the fourth book of the New Testament, the Gospel of John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. And then there's 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John, which are towards the end of the New Testament. So if everyone could turn to 1 John, it has the number one on it. When you read it, it might look like 1 John, but it's 1 John. Now, we're actually going to be learning in 1 John 3. Our scripture memory verses from 1 John 4, but we're going to be in 1 John 3, verse 11. 1 John talks a lot about what loving someone looks like. So we might watch TV shows or read books or be sitting on the subway and see pictures and ads about love. But there is one type of love that is greater and bigger than all the other loves. It's how God loves us. And so in the world, we might see a lot of things that are called love, and some of them might be from God, but some might not be. And so in today's lesson, we're gonna learn what God has to say about love. Isn't that exciting? I'm really excited. So we are in 1 John chapter 3, verse 11. The heading says, love one another. Verse 11 says, 
For this is the message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Okay, so that's pretty much what we've just said. We gotta love one another. But what does that mean? We are gonna get a good definition from the Bible of what love looks like. Verse 12 says, We should not be like Cain, who was of the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own deeds were evil and his brothers righteous. Okay, so you might be saying, wait, who is Cain? Why are we talking about murder? What's going on? Back in Genesis, way at the beginning of the Bible, Adam and Eve were the first two people and they disobeyed God. And so they had to leave God's perfect home and they had two children. They were brothers, Cain and Abel. And you might remember this, but if you don't remember, let me tell you what happened. Cain and Abel, when they were sort of like more grown up kids, the Bible doesn't tell us exactly what age they were, but they weren't like seven, you know, they were older. Um, they brought God an offering and Abel, Abel worked really, really hard on the offering he brought God and Cain didn't work very hard. He kind of just brought God something that he didn't really work hard at. And God was really, really happy with what Abel brought and he didn't like what Cain brought as much. And so Cain got really jealous of Abel and really angry and he killed Abel. Do you think that that made God happy? No. Do you think that was loving? No, even though Cain and Abel were brothers, Cain did not show Abel the love of God. And so John, the author, is bringing this up to remind us of how we should not behave. We should not behave like Cain. We should not be jealous or angry. We should not bring God things that we don't really try hard at and we should not murder. Let's keep learning though, because so now we're seeing what love isn't. We need to see what love is by God's definition in the Bible. Let's jump ahead to verse 16. First John 3:16 says, For this we know love, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. Okay, who do you think John is writing about? Jesus. By this we know love that he laid down his life for us. Love means sacrificing your life for people. That's what Jesus did for us. Yeah, Jesus loved us so much that he said, you know what? I'm gonna pay the price for their sins. Not just one or two people, all people. So where we see Cain hurting Abel, Jesus said, you know what? I'm going to allow myself to be hurt out of love. Does that make sense? Let's keep reading. Verse 17 says, but if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and truth. Okay, so these are a big couple of verses and it kind of jumps around. So it's talking about Jesus laying down his life for us. And you or I, we are not Jesus, right? We can't pay the price for sin, but we can look at what Jesus did and we can see, okay, how can I love others in a big way? Like if someone needs food or if someone needs a friend or if someone needs money or a coat or help learning something. 
the way we can show people God's love is by helping meet their needs, right? That's why it says in verse 17, but if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? First, when it says brothers, does it just mean boys? It also means girls, right? So when we see people in need, if we have the love of God in our heart and we're able to help, we should help. That helps people know God, right? Because ultimately, yes, my tummy will get hungry. Or yes, in the winter time, I will get very cold and need a jacket. Or if it's raining, I need a house. But the biggest need you have and I have and everybody has is in our heart. Do you know what everyone's deepest need is? Everyone's deepest need is to know the love of God because every human heart is sinful and every human heart needs Jesus. So we're reading in this scripture how Jesus showed us love by laying down his life. And for us, when we see people's needs, we can try to help them. We also need to make sure that we remember the needs of everybody's heart to know God's love and compassion and peace and acceptance and salvation. We know what the Bible has taught us about God. How can we tell the people we see about God? We can speak the truth of the Bible and we can help them with the things they need. Are you seeing how God's love is different from the love we might see around us in New York City or whatever city you live in if you're watching this from somewhere else. Before we keep reading, I want us to remember that God has given us commandments or rules. Commandments is a big word for rule, right? And God's commandments he gave to us because he loves us, right? Like Just like a mom or a dad might have a rule of don't touch the stove, it's because they want to keep you safe. They don't want you to get your hand burnt, right? So um, God's commandments help keep us safe in our heart and it helps keep others safe. So like when God says don't murder or don't steal or don't use God's name in vain, those are commandments that help us show God's love to other people and help keep our heart safe. And so the word commandment is going to come up in the next verses we're going to read. And I just want us to remember that God is commanding us to love one another the way he loves us. He's not just suggesting it. He's not just saying, oh, you can go love people if you feel like it. Like, no, it is a commandment. It is very important to God that we show love to each other. Yeah? All right, verse 23 says, And this is his commandment, that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he commanded us. Okay, so this is just a reminder that God's commanding us to believe in Jesus and know that he loves us because he died on the cross for our sins, right? Verse 24 says, Whoever keeps his commandments abides in God, and God in him. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given us. So the word abide is a special word that just means to stay with or to be with or never leaving, right? So we know that because of Jesus, we can abide Abide, we can stay with God, but also He abides, He stays in our heart because of the Holy Spirit. And guys, that is really special because the Holy Spirit, who abides in us, helps us keep God's commands. So the Holy Spirit 
will help us to love everybody. And we by ourselves, we can't love each other very well. By myself, I am grumpy. Like if I don't have a cup of coffee in the morning, watch out, because I could be a grouch. But I have the Holy Spirit abiding in my heart, helping me keep God's commands. So even if I haven't had my coffee, I know that if I pray and read my Bible and I listen to the Holy Spirit, I can be loving to other people, showing them God's true love. And God's love never runs out. Yeah? The love we see in this world, it might run out. But the love of God never runs out. Yeah? If we keep going, next we're hitting 1 John chapter 4. And if we fast forward to 1 John 4, 7, our scripture memory verse, you can see the heading is God is love. So let's read our scripture memory verse together. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. So because of God, we can have love and it will help us know him better. Verse eight says, anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us that God sent his only son into the world that we might live through him. Manifest might seem like a big word, this is not exactly like a great analogy, but let's say I love to paint. And in my imagination, I see a bright blue sky and flowers growing out of the ground and grass and a butterfly. If I want to make manifest that imagination and I'm a painter, what might I do? I might paint it, the butterfly and the flowers and the sky, right? So God is love. His whole heart is love. His whole being is love. And to manifest that, to show that, he didn't just keep it all in his head. He sent Jesus to earth. Now the next verse has a really big word in it, but I think you guys can handle it. Let's learn. 1 John 4.10 says, In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Okay, you're probably like, um, Julia, what is propitiation? Can you all try to say that? Just try. If you, if you can't say it, it's no big deal. Just give it a shot propitiation. I have to tell you, I didn't know what this word meant until I was like 20 or 21. So you're already leagues ahead of Miss Julia. Propitiation is a really, really big word that means that Jesus took our place, right? Remember how Jesus died for our sins? In this verse, it says that he was the propitiation for our sins. That means he actually took our place. So you and I, we sin. Just today, I got impatient. I thought, oh, I'm impatient. I feel grumpy. Or yesterday, I was running late. And rather than say hello to someone who said hello, I just sped on by. Right? That is sinful. Do you hear how I've sinned? or I know there's times I haven't been the nicest to my mommy. Those sins are real. Your sins are real too. And if you take a moment, I'm sure you can think in your heart of times that you have not obeyed God's commandments. Now, those sins, those things you just thought of, those things I just shared, those are the things 
that separate us from God. The wages of sin is death. That means in order to pay for our sins, to get back right with God, we can't pay him back with money. We can't pay him back with ice cream. The way to pay back for our sins is death. And so we know that Jesus came and died on the cross for our sins. He, is, he allowed himself to die, to pay back for our sins. So that word propitiation is a big fancy word that just means he took our place. We should have died for our own sins, but Jesus said, no, I will take their place. And he did it for the sins of the whole world. Jesus never sinned, not even one time. And so to be the propitiation, to take our place, he had to be perfect. And he was. Now, if you like really know the Bible, you might say, Miss Julia, I remember sometimes where Jesus got a little bit impatient. And I would say, you're so right. There were a few times where Jesus got impatient because he was standing up for what was right. It is not wrong to stand up for what is right. But you see how Jesus being impatient is very different from Miss Julia when I am just impatient, right? That's very different. (laughs) So Jesus never sinned. I sin all the time. Yeah? So this new word, propitiation, really means to take our place. Does that make sense to you in your heart? It makes my heart feel so overwhelmed and so thankful. Like thinking about Jesus taking my place. Wow, right? So in today's lesson, you guys, we just got a big overview of what God's love looks like. Sometimes in the world, love looks like me, me, me. What are you going to do for me? If you love me, you'll help me. Or if you love me, you'll give me presents. Or if you love me, you'll do this or that. God's definition of love is that he gave everything for us. And so if we want to show his love to the world, we have to be willing to give, right? Love isn't about receiving. It's about giving. And so this week, just take time to think about that and pray to God about that. To say, God, help me understand your love better. Because throughout our lives, we're going to keep learning more and more about the love of Jesus. Thank you guys for spending time with me today. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, this was a really awesome lesson Thank you that it is true that you are the propitiation for our sins. You took our place. You died so that we didn't have to. And that is big, God. Help us to understand how big your great love is. Thank you for coming here. Thank you for giving your life for us. And thank you that you are God. You are invincible. You rose again on the third day, and we can be in your family forever and ever. We love you, Jesus. Help us to love you more and more. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Great job today, you guys. We had lots of big words, lots of chit-chat, but you did awesome. I'll see you next time. (laughs) Thank <laughs> you.